Hi everyone, my name is Ankur Dugal and I'm a solutions architect at Arise. I'm going to talk about how you can use Arise to build your AI agents. I'm going to dive deep into how you can develop, iterate, and prompt engineer your solutions, evaluate and understand what's going right and wrong with your agents, and finally, observe and understand what's actually happening with your agents in production. Arise is used for the entire production pipeline from development into production. How that works is on the development side, you start by collecting data and using that data to build your agent. And when you're building your agent, you're gonna to start to run evaluations on top of it to see how well it performs and how well it actually fails. Uh, you're gonna see that quite a lot because AI is kind of unpredictable and uh, it's kind of what happens, it's the name of the game. With those failures, you're gonna build out something we like to call a golden data set. And you're going to use that to sort of prompt engineer or fine tune your models to improve their performance. And I like to think of that as your whole development workflow. That development workflow then begins to move into production. And when you get into production, you're going to start to see that your overall evals are going to kind of degrade in performance because humans are not what you think they are and AI is not what you think it is. So you're going to kind of want to go through the sort of evaluation of your evaluators. And that evaluation of your evaluators will then you know, cycle back in to your actual development workflow and ultimately create this giant workflow that you're going to go through because your agents are only as good as your evaluators. Now I'm going to go through an actual demo of an agent that I built it's a land graph agent, a financial land graph agent, which you can use, which can show you kind of how the actual traces and everything would look inside the platform. So we're going to ask a simple question of something like how, no, actually, when is the next rate cut going to happen? Something like that. And I'm going to just run that and then I'm going to go back to the actual platform and show you how to look. So I'm going to pull up this agent view where you're going to be able to see what things look like. And here you're going to get these as soon as traces come in and you're going to see things like the supervisor agent or the web researcher agent, the financial data analyst, the summarizer and some tool calls like some basic uh, web scraping or stock data analysis or getting stock information, etc. And now we're going to go back and hopefully see the actual output from the original screen. And nice, we see some output, we see the actual correct date. Now let's go back and see what that looks like in the actual platform, what happened under the hood. Because all we see is the input and output, right? Now for under the hood, you can see all the individual steps that were done. You can see the LLM calls, you can actually see the individual agents that were run, whether it's like the web researcher agent or the output summarizer agent or some of the, even the tool calls, for example, like I was saying, like, you know, the reading web page. So you can kind of dive deeper and see kind of what the actual inputs and outputs were to every single step to understand what was happening along the way. Now, this is not the end all be all. What's really important is you're gonna be able to even get evaluations. Evaluations into like user frustration. Was the user frustrated? What's the actual label that the output was? And what the explanation was to that, why that label was given, why it was, why did they think they're not frustrated? Or here, for example, when I go to the supervisor agent, we're checking whether we're choosing the next correct agent. And in that sense, we're gonna check, hey, it's, it was it the correct agent? If so, why? What's the reasoning? And we need to know that so that we can debug it and understand what's actually going on. Now, with evaluations, it's really important to understand how they're made. There's a few different types of evaluations. One being the code evaluator, which you can use for simple code evaluation, uh, simple runs like JSON parsable or regex matching, or even LLM as a judge where you can dive deeper and use it as like a hammer and a catch-all tool, right? It can basically work anywhere. And because it's a, an LLM as a judge, it can get a little expensive. So you may want to sample based on what you're actually utilizing and also dive deeper into specific attributes. So whether you want to dive deeper into a specific LLM like the um, OpenAI call or maybe just a, over, instead of such a wide group, maybe even deeper into the specific agent like the supervisor agent like we did earlier. And so now we're going to see what it actually looks like when you're building out an evaluation. They're just simple prompt templates and we have some out of the box. 
And because it's a prompt template, you're complete, they're completely customizable to your needs and use cases. Like I said, that's something that's really important. And you're gonna be able to set your output, whatever you want, whatever labels you want. And then you're also gonna be able to get explanations in a separate window here. So now we're gonna go through the full development workflow of how that'll look like in the platform. So you're gonna start by first collecting some data and putting that in a data set. That data set can be put in in a few different ways. We can start by either doing a CSV if you have data stored in an Excel sheet or something like that. Or if you have some data stored in like an S3 bucket, you can pull it in and drop it in via code. Or if you have some data in production and you're tracing it, you can look at your evaluations that currently exist, filter on those, and add those via add those into a data set. I already have a data set of hallucinations from a RAG agent. In this context, hallucinations means the agent made up the information without pulling it directly from the context provided. Now this can be pretty detrimental in a few use cases, so we're gonna try to iterate on this using an experiment. You can run an experiment either via code. Now this is good for those who like to live behind an IDE, or if you have a CI/CD pipeline and to help you test your prompts to make sure that they're matching the standards that are provided by your golden data set. Now, the more fun and more approachable way and the way I personally prefer for those non-technical or even myself as a technical is the prompt playground. It's actually integrated directly with our prompt hub, which is a versioning tool where you can get access to all your prompts. So in this first version here, we have the actual original prompt that was given with this, uh, with the initial use case and here we can see that it'll actually ultimately give out the same hallucination what's great is we can actually run evaluations directly in the prompt playground so i'm going to be running the same hallucination evaluation on this on this run and we're going to see here in just a moment that basically everything here is still hallucinated so i'm just going to scroll through and choose the one that's just one of the most recent ones and just see the output and we're gonna see that it's hallucinated here. So we're gonna to try to iterate on this and improve it. To iterate on it, we're going to click on the duplicate prompt button twice, uh, and we're going to switch over to version two. Version two here just basically adds one line. If you do not have enough context to answer the question, say, I do not know. This basically ensures that we are not hallucinating. So I'm gonna duplicate this one more time and actually just change the model. So we can actually test across to see if the prompt change can actually allow us to save some costs and run it maybe with just 3.5 turbo. So I'm now gonna run this across both models. Ultimately, you can see that GPT-40 does a great job at I do not know. 3.5 does a decent job, but it's sometimes a little bit more verbose. Um, and you can actually see across all three runs as you kind of want to dive deeper and understand because nine runs you can maybe see easily on that prompt playground, but as you want to see more data, you're going to want to dive deeper and see what's actually happening on a high level. Now that you've collected some good data, you're going to want to actually go and iterate on that data and you want to give it some labels to ensure that you're building out a golden data set. So you can start giving it some annotations using a simple annotation workflow of adding in some basic um, you know, labels or notes or some other sort of information, whether it's a score, et cetera. And you can use that to continuously experiment and build on. Not only that, you'll actually get access to custom dashboards. These custom dashboards utilize the, the custom metrics that you've developed, so your own evaluation. So you'll be able to get uh, information about all of your custom evaluations that you've run but if dashboards are only good as long as you can see them as soon as you cannot you're going to want some alerts or monitors and to set those monitors up you can set them up even on your custom metrics like we did with the dashboard and build out these custom monitors with manual or automatic thresholds a manual threshold is just based on a certain metric as soon as your hallucination crosses that threshold you'll get alerted via slack pager duty or email your favorite form of communication or on the other side, when you have an automatic threshold, like for example, with hallucination, it'll be set based on certain standard deviations with a certain time frame around that. And you're going to, it'll basically be useful, especially for those hallucination metrics where you don't necessarily, or not hallucination, for latency, especially. I think here one I've chosen is hallucination, but latency, it's really important because you want to be only alerted in case latency is reaching a, you know, an unusual level. 
Um, so we're going to redo that one part right there. And then for the automatic threshold, you could choose something. We're going to go with the hallucination one here, but generally, whether it's with hallucination or latency, it may be something that's not as urgent, where you don't need to be alerted immediately as soon as a certain level gets hit, but only if it's reaching on the, on the amounts that are not normal. So in hallucination or latency, those might be certain issues there. And so it can be set over a set period of time with a certain amount of standard deviations away from the norm, you'll get alerted as well. So now I'm gonna show you how you can actually build out some of these custom metrics. So with these custom metrics, these are useful because you can you know, build out whatever is based on your actual data. And it's a simple SQL query. So you'll get access to everything and you'll get a graph to see exactly what you built out as well as you'll get the final number.